Hello, and it's lovely to be with you for our daily service today on this Tuesday. I hope whatever time you're watching and wherever you're tuning in, you're very aware that the Lord is a God who has lavished his love on you in Christ, so much so that you're his child. This is how the Apostle John puts it in his letter. See what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. Father God, we pray that today, wherever we are, whatever our day holds or has held, we pray that today we might know ourselves to be your children, precious to you, loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to rub that great reality into our hearts and into our minds by reading together Psalm 23. I'll read the odd verses and then let's all join in with the even verses together. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Pete kicked off us looking at Matthew 18 and Jesus' words in that chapter yesterday, and we're going to continue in our forage through Matthew 18, and I'm going to read verses 6 and 7. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung round their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. Yesterday with, with Pizza, we were thinking about the nature of being a follower of Jesus. If you want to follow Jesus, you need to become like a little child. Become like a little child because children in the first century had no status. They were nobodies. And Jesus taught his disciples, look, look, if you want to follow me, you need to learn humility. You need to learn to put yourself at the bottom of the pile. Not asking the question, am I the king of the castle? But putting yourself to the very bottom. Not worrying about who is the greatest, but knowing yourself to be the very least. Become a nobody. But today, Jesus changes track somewhat. Instead of what it means to follow Jesus, Jesus teaches us what it means to relate to other Christians, what it means to relate to little ones, what it means to relate to nobodies who are the least, who are his followers. Jesus knows that we live in a world where everybody is asking who is the king of the castle, whether a pensioner or a toddler. And if you're not the king of the castle, if you're not the king of the castle, what we naturally do is we look up to and we respect and we honour those that are and we look down upon and we at best ignore or worse mistreat those that are at the bottom of the pile. And Jesus says all Christians are in a sense at the bottom of the pile. All of us have become the least. We are nobodies. We are little ones. We are irrelevant. But Jesus says, don't you dare, if you're a Christian believer, don't you dare treat little ones badly. Don't you dare mistreat them. Don't you dare cause them to stumble, is the word that he uses. As if the Christian life is a journey and we're journeying towards eternity with God. And to cause, be caused to stumble is to trip up in the Christian life, to start to doubt the Lord's goodness. To start to struggle with sin and begin to fall into sinful patterns of life. To begin to doubt your assurance. Am I really saved? Am I really loved? Am I really forgiven? That is what Jesus means by stumble here. And Jesus says, look, 
don't you dare, don't you dare cause one of these little ones, one of these nobodies to struggle in the Christian life. Because if you do, here's a stark warning in verse 6, it would be better for you to have a large millstone hung round your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. That is the tragedy of abuse inside the church, where those who should be supporting, encouraging and enable flourishing in the Christian life cause great harm, mental or psychological or physical or sexual harm. And they cause God's little ones to stumble. And that is why churches must be a place that that, that is not what happens. We must be a place where we enable others to flourish. But of course, even though I've not been guilty of those terrible things, in my heart and in all of our hearts is that king of the castle mentality, naturally looking down upon and ignoring those below us, and naturally respecting those above us. There is latent in all of our hearts this great capacity to cause those that we consider to be below us to stumble, to ignore them, perhaps in small ways, to mistreat them, perhaps in small ways. And as we'll see later in Matthew 18, we must not do that because little ones are God's little ones. Little ones, irrelevant ones, nobodies in God's kingdom, their angel always sees their father's face in heaven. They are precious to him and they must be precious to us. We're going to pray a prayer confessing our natural king of the castle type mentality in our hearts. Asking the Lord would help us to enable God's little ones to flourish instead of stumble. Let's pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done. And we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a disciplined, righteous and godly life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Father, we praise and thank you for that great truth that we began with, that you have lavished, lavished your love upon us, that we might be known and called your children. We pray that we might so know ourselves to be your children, so secure in that love that we might love and enable to flourish your little ones. Please kill in us any temptation to cause others to stumble, we pray. A prayer from Colossians chapter 1. We ask you, Lord God, to fill us with the knowledge of your will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that we may live a life worthy of you and please you in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of your Son, being strengthened with all power according to your glorious might, so that we may have great endurance and patience. And we pray that we might give you joyful thanks, our Father, for you have qualified us to share in the inheritance of your holy people in the kingdom of light. You have rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son you love, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And the collect for today. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, 
by the Spirit's gifts, equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn. A hymn that calls on us to rejoice that the Lord is King. To rejoice that Jesus has purged our stains and taken his seat in the heavens above. Let's sing together. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a serious warning from Jesus in Matthew 18. A serious warning because he loves his flock. And we must learn to do so as well. We finish with a final prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you love your people, the great and the small, the big and the little. You love those that the world thinks to be impressive and those that the world despises. We pray that as your little ones, we might enable and help your little ones to flourish. Both in this life and for the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you and I hope you have a really wonderful day, whatever you get up to.